who's walking in? Um, who's just touching it? Um, you know, coming off a first win, really for both of you, how much do you gain? Can you describe what you gain mentally, emotionally, confidence-wise from getting a win going into this week? Oh, it's awesome. You know, we needed that uh, for our confidence and things like that, and we know it's there. Um, but uh, finally, we put put a win together, and we're going to keep it rolling from here on out. Yeah, I I think you know what. You know, just what Jacob said is is spot on. These guys have worked extremely hard. You know, Jacob's been here now for his fifth year, and uh, you know he's he's gone through a lot in his time. There's, you know, the ups and downs, the whole thing. But he continue to work hard, and 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 to finally see it kind of come out in a decisive win is definitely a confidence builder. I think our guys saw that uh, there was an improvement made the first couple of weeks, but we got to find a way to get it done and uh, good way to do it, and uh, with another good opponent coming in. Jake, is it hard or is it part of your role as a senior to help keep the guys sort of understanding that you did some things well in the first two games, but you ultimately didn't do what you're there to do? You don't want them to get too down, but you don't want them to get excited about the things that they did well. So is that part of your job as a, as a senior? I think so, and uh, just keeping us focused on the process and, you know, the next week, hey, we got to move on and uh, we got to focus on what we got to get done this week, focus on the next opponent. And uh, if, as long as you're pushing forward, focusing on, uh, you know, what's up next, then kind of keeps your mind off of what we didn't get done. So make it a lot easier now that you do have the win that you can play. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Definitely does. How do you prepare for a coach like Lane Kiffin, who's been at the highest level, who's won a national championship with Alabama? His offense is multifaceted, typically, from, from, from what you see on tape. but. At FAU, what do you see, you know, from Lane that, that could present problems and how do you stop it? Well, you know, Coach Kiffin has is, is done, you know, an outstanding job. He's a very uh, popular coach in college football. He's coached in national championship game. He's been at the NFL level as a head coach at a young age. Uh, his father is with him, as, who is uh, the – the inventor of the Tampa 2 defense. His brother's with him. He's been at Ole Miss. They've got quite a staff. Kendall Bryles, uh, you know, the son of Art Bryles, and bringing their offensive philosophy. So there's a lot of things faceted there that you have to look at and you have to respect. But, uh, again, we have to, you know, look at what they're doing schematically and, and still break it down, and it's still going to come down to – Guys like Jake sit next to me against their guys and executing and doing those things and not get caught up with with any other storyline. Um, you know they've had uh, you know a Big Ten non-conference opponent like we have. They've played a Service Academy like we've had, and and then they played an FCS school like we have. So it's very similar kind of non-conference schedule to this point. Do you do you know Lane or his father well? Or no, I do not. No, I do not. Never met him. Never met him. So um, yeah, I'm. I had a friend of mine that was on his staff at USC, and that's about as close as it gets. So, Jake, what do you remember about the game down there two years ago, and, and specifically to the fact that you know they may be faster and quicker, they may be better quote unquote athletes, but but what were you guys able to do to sort of beat them at that game, and how might that translate to this game? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, they're probably you know they got some good athletes down there, uh, but uh, I guess once you get up on them and you start. When in that, you know, they'll start falling off. So we just got to keep plugging away. And, um, you know, we did get the win when we were down there. Our defense uh, had a great game that game. I think they put up a lot of points defensively. So uh, uh, just, you know, defense bring it and then the offense bring it this year. And I think we'll have a great chance to beat them. Jacob, John was telling me they have something like 102 players on the roster from Florida. What would that fact alone say about the talent they have on the team? Uh, there, there's good talent uh, down in Florida. I mean, you know, there's some some athletes like anywhere, but uh, FAU I guess likes to get them from that state. So, but uh, I mean, this is just another football team, and we gotta, you know, come up with the schemes to to beat them, and then our guys gotta get ready like anybody else. Is there is there a bit of a kinship amongst you guys? There's eight or ten or twelve Florida guys on your team, obviously. Is there a kind of a kinship, even though it's a big state? And you guys are sometimes far apart from each other. Is there a bit of a connection amongst the Florida guys on your team? Uh, I think you know some of the guys probably you know know a lot of the guys. We got some South Florida um, teammates, so they probably they probably have friends or whatever. I know one of the guys on the team, but uh, you know it's just 
another football team. Let's go out there and get the win. Lance, in the last game, you scored a lot of points in the first quarter, 30 in the first half, mm -hmm. not as much scoring in the second half. Was that pulling the reins back, or is it, did the offense um, kind of slow down a little bit? You know, I think things slowed down a little bit. Uh, you, you know, the, the thing that we talked about in our, in our meeting yesterday was, I, I think, especially in the fourth quarter, things really got kind of pulled back a little bit. Um, I think we had the ball at their 31-yard line with over 10 minutes to go and kicked the field goal with under three minutes to go. So it went like 25 yards in eight minutes. So it really was kind of a methodical clock chewing that at that point. Uh, and really kind of prevented us in some ways of hoping to get four guys in the game. So it, it wasn't really like that was planned out. It kind of played out that way after they scored. Um, uh, you know, letdown, I can't say there was a letdown at halftime, probably some modifications and what we were really going to do and, and, you know, throwing the ball down the field, doing things like that. We, like Jonathan Hawkins didn't play second half. Chris Ford didn't play second half. There's some other guys that, you know, we started rotating a little bit more and sometimes that, that can hurt a little bit of continuity. But at the same time, I was very pleased with the way some guys got a chance to, to play and produce. In, in really their first extensive action. A guy like Skylar Hartley's worked extremely hard and he's in, got to play left and right guard for us, so he got some good snaps for him. Paul Nosworthy at left tackle got his, uh, extended playing time. So guys like that, Theo Anderson, a lot of guys. So uh, And that's going to be important as we move forward. More important in my eyes as a head coach than whether we hit 50 points or not or something like that. <laughs> Um, they, amongst the similarities that you mentioned between your two teams, they ran the ball very well <coughs> in their FCS game. They had yeah. two guys over 100 yards rushing. Yep. What, what does that indicate to you about what they want to do offensively, and maybe some levels of success that they've had at that position? Well, I, I'm, you know, not knowing what they went through or whatever, but sometimes when you get in these matchups, sometimes against, uh, you know, an FCS program, not as many scholarships, things like that. Sometimes you can. Um, use your size, strength, uh, depth to to wear people down, you know, um, and uh, it, you know they ran the ball extremely well, um, as you indicated. Um, the thing about their offense, a lot of times, is they're going to spread you out. I mean, they're going to get their receivers sometimes almost on the uh, on the boundary, and uh, they're going to spread you out. But what that's going to do is create, you know, lane, you know running lanes and things like that where your safeties and other people have you know a larger area to condense before you can set an edge and things like that sometimes with your outside players so they do that as well as incorporate a vertical passing game and doing some other things and they try to spread their athletes out and make you defend the whole field and that and that's where the issue comes so a lot of times when you see teams that do that you're, you're thinking that it's all about the passing game but it really incorporates a lot more into their running game and, and I think uh you know, we saw that when we played Bowling Green a couple of years ago when Dino Babers, now at Syracuse, does it. You know, very similar philosophy. He spent time at Baylor. So, and I know Baylor played here a few years back. So, um, but, you know, much like our staff and their staff now, just like when we played, when Charlie Partridge was the head coach at Florida Atlantic, you know, there's been enough roster change over in a short period of time for them as well as ours since the last meeting. So it's, it's kind of a whole different matchup. To follow up on... On Paul's question, uh, I read a story um, yesterday about FAU talking about they like to spread folks out. They only had four passes past the line of scrimmage um, in their in their game against Bethune. So how do you kind of prepare your your defense for that, knowing they can spread you out, knowing mm -hmm. the running lanes are there? How, what, what's the what's the message to your defense heading into this week? Well, there's enough, uh, I, I guess, Nick, uh, enough passes against Wisconsin and, and Navy that, that showed a little bit conceptually what they want to do and, and uh, their success of, of really, um, you know, what they did against Wisconsin and had success against them. And that game was close for, for quite a while and, and their ability to line up with, you know, with, with a pretty good successful Wisconsin program for quite a period of time and, and match them in speed and other things. And same thing against Navy. So uh, I think our guys will know that. And, and then there are guys that were on the roster two years ago. So you still get a, a chance to watch film of, uh, you know, individual, you know, people and personnel and, and to get write-ups on that as well. Similar to your uh, film festival you went through for Minnesota, do you go back and look yeah, at Baylor? Yeah. 
related film for a game like this? It could be Baylor related. It could be Alabama related. It could be Ole Miss related. It could be, um, you know, Florida Atlantic related. Um, can't remember exactly. I think Monty, the father, was at Jacksonville last year. I, it could be any and all that, that uh, sometimes you could research. But uh, it's still, you know, if this was game one, Paul, it'd be a lot more of that probably. than. But now you, you, you do have three games. And most of the time, um, now the Navy game is a little different because of schematics again. But, you know, most breakdowns are, are three to four game tendencies. Um, and then the rest of your games that you have even late in the year are for references or, or similar, to, you know, um, that kind of fit your style so you can see how they line up. Do you look much at the film from two years ago or is it too much change for that to really be relevant? Um, probably too much change. I mean, I have looked at it. We looked at it over the summer. We'll, we'll glance at some things. Um, um, just off the top of my head, I think the offensive line coach stayed and maybe one other person, um, you know, uh, our director of player personnel, Rock Valentoni, was a defensive coordinator there for the last three seasons. So, uh, you know, Rock is, you know, knows the personnel of the players that have stayed. So um, I guess that's that, that's a good thing in house. Um, so um, those are those are benefits. So probably even more so than that game uh, two years ago. Jake, what have you seen as the biggest difference from last year to this year in, in how Tyree is not just performing on the field as a quarterback, but maybe acting as a quarterback? Uh, well, you know, the confidence is there. So, uh, and the chemistry is coming along with the wide receivers and then the whole team, you know, he knows the plays. He knows, you know, what the coaches are looking for and things like that. So he's able to, you know, talk to us more and uh, just kind of coach up. Everybody, you know, pull somebody aside, hey, I need you to, you know, do this on this route or whatever the case may be. But, uh, yeah, he's he's definitely improved and uh, he's going in the right direction. Uh, they haven't given up. They're not giving up a lot of passing yards. Uh, I'm not familiar with all their opponents. How much of that is a function of the teams they're playing against running a lot and how much of that is how good they are in that area? I think it's some of each. I, I want to make sure that you, you give them their credit. They're very active and athletic on, on defense. Uh, it starts up front. Uh, um, I think they have two graduate transfers in the – or not transfers, two graduate players in their in their defensive line, one being a transfer that was at Pitt and and – was regarded as one of Pitt's best defensive linemen, and then one that was in their program played against us a couple of years ago. Um, but uh, uh, you know, athletically, they move around in the back seven very well. Um, and then, I, and then if you look at what Wisconsin's going to do offensively, they're they're going to try to establish a run game. Navy is an option attack, so sometimes that that, that that's going to play into what they're going to do at least percentage wise on play calls. With how well you ran the ball last week. Um, do you feel like you guys can be that kind of team? Yeah, I think we took a great step in the right direction um, for us to establish a running game, and that's been something that we've we've lacked a little bit here this year. And and as we try to work uh, closer to being a balanced attack of how people are going to have to defend us with the almost in the same but different type mentality of what I said about them. We want everybody out to defend the whole field and be balanced as possible, whether it be defending the quarterback, running back, or any of our receivers or tight ends. So, and, and when you see Tyler Mayberry catch a pass down the field, you know, it's not – or Antonio Nunn running past somebody versus it's not just Anthony Johnson. Kamadi Hosley is going to have some catches, okay? We targeted Jamal Island, okay, and, you know, Jonathan Hawkins, Emmanuel Reed. So we're not becoming, you know, a one-trick pony in this thing, and it's not going to be all Tyree Jackson running the football. So we've got to find ways to use all our weapons and uh, make people defend everyone. If you include Tyree in the discussion here, how do you decide amongst the – Emmanuel and Jonathan and Tyree about who who you want to run the ball, whose style fits the best yeah. in a particular game. How do you, you know, is there or is it just sort of a standard rotation of, of plays and players? Rock, paper, scissors? No. Um, um, you know, it's schematics of what, what the what the game's going to dictate. You know, we, we do look at and sometimes maybe certain plays that, that fit guys' running styles, but you can't live on that because, quite, quite frankly, through film study, you're going to, you know, there's going to be tendencies that you'll give away by who's in the game. 
you know, a lot of the things in the run game between those running backs you mentioned and, and Tyree um, are going to be many times a, an RPO, a run pass option, or a read, a read scheme of a, of a give or keep for the quarterback. So it's going to be predicated more on the defense, and that's what you like in a zone option game because the option is to give it or keep it. And, and that's going to be predicated on what he sees exactly happen. So it's not going to be designed necessarily that – the running back carries it, or it's going to be predicated on just like a just like a read in the pass game is going to be pre predicated on on drops or coverages. So that's what we're going to try to do. There are some design runs for the quarterback. There are some draws. There are some other things, but and there are plays that are just given to the running back. So um, that all has to go on, on on what we see and how we feel. And sometimes if a guy like Emmanuel has a hot hand, he's gonna he's gonna get he's gonna get some carries. With the way he ran the ball on Saturday, I think he's earned a little more. Yeah, I, well, I would think, you know, I think he's, he's gained confidence. We gained confidence. Uh, you know, again, as, as I stated earlier, Jonathan Hawkins didn't play the second half and didn't dress the second half. So, you know, would Jonathan have had those numbers? You know, very possibly, you know, if, if we would have, you know, you know, same thing. So it doesn't, it doesn't uh, diminish our uh, confidence in him either. We, we just feel like we've added to our, to our ability to, to be productive. I may have missed if you said this. Is Jonathan all right as far as practicing yep, this week yep, and going forward? Yep, okay. Jonathan will be ready to go. Coach or Jacob. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you.